What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are doing well and welcome to today's video which is a match preview of Chelsea's Premier League game against Norwich City away at Carrow Road. So the big question is, can Lampard's lads go up to Norwich and ruin the Pookie party? Timu Pookie. We're going to get into that but before we do I want to request that you do subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell notifications icon because I upload every single day and you do not want to miss out on any content. Also, if you could like this video, that would be really helpful. Right, so let's get into it. Frank Lampard is still without a competitive win for his Chelsea side, and he will be hoping a Premier League game against a promoted side will be just the tonic to get him his first three points. It's true Frank's Chelsea are without a win, but you know what? There's been loads of positive spells of play and generally positive performances in part. <laughs> from his Chelsea side. But you know what? Daniel Farker's men will not just roll over. Remember, they were champions of the championship last season. They played pretty open, expansive football and they have a lot of confidence. I mean, they did get turned over at Anfield, but they slapped about Newcastle. Pookie got his hat trick. And, you know, they'll be riding a high on that and they're at home. So they'll fancy themselves against the Chelsea side that are yet to pick up a win. But stylistically, Norwich's open, expansive play might actually suit Chelsea better so we're going to get into that so let's bring up the analysis screen. So Fark's men do play a 4-2-3-1 and I've pulled up on the graphic next to me the 11 that they played against Newcastle last time out so we could probably expect something similar certainly that big man up front Timu Puki. The 29 year old is a poacher extraordinaire and looks like he can score quite a lot of different types of goals and obviously confidence for him is at an all time high. So whoever lines up in Lampard's defence, probably I think Rudiger and either Christensen or Zuma, they will have to do their research on Puki and try and marshal him as best they can. In terms of match preparation, they have 29 league goals from last season to watch back from Pookie and he's already top scorer this season with four goals joint with Raheem Sterling. So plenty of time to research how he plays and learn to try and nullify that I guess as well as Norwich as a whole I feel like Lampard's men really need to sort of pin them down and not take them lightly here. So far in the Premier League and the two games they've played Norwich have not adapted the way they played in terms of how they used to play in the championship. Obviously this played dividends last time out and they had a really good game against a very poor Newcastle side but they tried to take their game to Anfield and they got turned over. So the question is, would Fark have learned his lesson? Obviously they're at home, so they're probably gonna play their expansive style, but regardless, this would suit Chelsea better if they did play like this, because as everyone's probably noticed in the three competitive games Chelsea have played so far, they are most vulnerable to the counter-attack. And if Norwich are gonna try and play with the ball and sort of be vulnerable to the you know, turning over possession and vulnerable in transition. Chelsea can try and nick the ball back a lot via Kante, dominate midfield, create chances, and hopefully the spaces that have been afforded by Norwich's expansive style of play allows Chelsea to score goals. So yeah, Daniel Fark, Norwich City, 4-2-3-1. Let's switch the graphic to how Chelsea might play. Now, as you can see, I've put two different formations up on the screen. One I'll talk about just in a moment, Lampard's face. Favorite, but I've also included the 4-4-2 diamond. Now, we have not seen this formation from Lampard since pre-season, but he did employ it quite a few times and it looked like it might be one of his go-to shapes. Although his Chelsea side are not properly well versed in this formation yet, or certainly we'd assume they're not, I feel like this could be the kind of game Lampard tries it out again. I know, I figured it would either be a low block team that don't counter attack, that need to be broken down, or just a lower level opposition. Now I know Norwich were champions last season of the second division, but they're still considered lower league opposition of course. And I think the diamond midfield could work here, plus also interestingly, I think it would be a good move in terms of the strikers. Benching Giroud for this game and bringing in Batshuayi and Tammy could be good for a couple of reasons. I did a video yesterday on why I think Michy Batshuayi deserves his chance and he'd scored a couple of goals a couple of nights ago in the development squad with Frank Lampard watching. If he's up to fitness, he deserves a chance in a competitive game. Tammy Abraham, remember Chelsea's number nine, is yet to get a goal. Well, most players are yet to get a goal. 
But the sooner he gets on the score sheet, the better for Chelsea, Tammy and Frank Lampard. So it could be a two birds, one stone situation, playing the diamond midfield and trying to nurture that strike partnership between Batshuayi and Abraham. In this formation, Lampard could still play his golden boy, Mason Mount, get N'Golo Kante in there, and even play someone like Kovacic on the left as well. That's one option. Another option is going to what seems to be Lampard's favoured and most used formation. Now, broadcasters are often confused in putting this formation out as a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3 and the truth is it kind of is both those but really this formation is a 4-1-4-1. I've said this before when watching games Jorginho screens the back four, well he doesn't really screen it, we know he's okay defensively but that's not really his vibe, but he's still flanked with N'Golo Kante on the right and a different player on the left. So this is where people think, right, 4-3-3 like Maurizio Sarri, but the way the banks line up, it really is like a 4-1-4-1. The great thing about this formation is it's flexible without players having too much tactical instruction where they get confused. It can really easily turn into a 4-2-3-1 with Kante dropping dropping deep next to Jorginho and of course it can really easily turn into the Sari 4-3-3 system and obviously out of possession it very comfortably becomes a 4-5-1 but remember Lampard is a pragmatist and he likes trying out loads of different stuff so the shape will change depending on what situation and we've even seen this change into a 4-4-2 out of possession where the striker is usually joined by the number 10 so usually Mason Mount and they go around pressing together with two bank of four behind them. Obviously very tactically flexible because there's so much sort of flexibility and change in this formation where perhaps the diamond is a little bit more complicated to employ different shapes in different situations. Odds are Lampard will go for his go to 4141 shape shifting formation. All right, that's enough for looking at shapes and formations and potential tactic change. Let's get rid of the analysis screen. I want to talk about some potential key factors of this game. Firstly, it's the recurring theme, it's the space between the lines, and when you're playing against an informed striker like Timu Puki, you've got to be incredibly disciplined. It did look like when Frank's uh, formation shape was a bit more like the Sari 433 that's drilled into the players that they move around as a unit and they don't leave much space between the lines therefore it's more defensively solid and I guess there's a, more of a security blanket. Hopefully this won't be much of an issue against a team like Norwich City but it still needs to be drilled into the players for moving forward into this domestic campaign because they really need to sort out bad habits. A positive thing is really continuing what they're doing in terms of chance creation because if there's one positive recurring theme in Frank Lampard's Chelsea is they're not short of creating chances. The combinations are still really good and they're still there. Loads of offensive passages of play, just I guess chances not being finished off. A really important talking point and a really obvious one is of course Timu Puki. He's in superb form and it's not like just a couple of games purple patch. He's essentially picked up where he left off from last season. Now Chelsea is still finding their feet as a team, kind of the opposite of Norwich. So that goes with the centre-back partnership as well. So whoever starts in the centre-back positions need to both know exactly what their jobs are in terms of marshalling the Norwich City striker. I feel like Antonio Rudiger could do really well here. It does look like he might start and he might be fit to start and this might be the perfect game for him to start. Hopefully he does a bit of man marking and um, on set pieces Lampard maybe chills out with the zonal marking a little bit and hopefully... Timu Puki can be marshalled by the Chelsea defence. So the biggest problem for Chelsea so far this season has been finishing off chances. Mason Mount scored the only goal in 180 minutes, but generally there looks like an issue of confidence with strikers. Giroud will get the odd goal throughout the season. I'm not really worried about that. Obviously there's the sort of issue with Tammy Abraham, he needs to go off the mark, but that's why I said the diamond formation might suit. Getting two strikers in there, one that's generally never lacks confidence in Michy Batshuayi and Chelsea's number nine young Tammy Abraham Lampard would love him to get off the mark so Chelsea should be able to create a lot of chances against an expansive team like Norwich they're certainly a lot lower level opposition and this might be a good opportunity to get both strikers in and say go on score a goal or two and that will inherently develop their confidence moving forwards and finally I have to talk about the player burnout problem Chelsea have looked superb for opening 30 minutes in games maybe 20 minutes where they look like 
prime Pep Barcelona 2008. And then they sort of die down in the first half and come the second half, they look like a completely different team. Is this physical burnout? Is it because of their trip to Istanbul? Is it a mental lapse of concentration where they just sort of drop their attention? If it is an attention issue, that needs to be slapped out of them by coach Frank Lampard. But if it is a fatigue issue, Frank needs to learn how to distribute the team's energy over 90 minutes. Of course there's the perspective of he wants to kill a team off in half an hour, score two goals early, break their confidence and then maybe you can calmly try and defend a bit more and conserve energy. I think he said in the post-match press conference when he talks about the Leicester game, Chelsea could have been 2-3-0 up in that first half hour and if they were, Leicester are of course going to be low and think okay well that's done, let's just try not get embarrassed here, but if you leave it 1-0 they'll come out in confidence and you're already knackered, they're not. So if you're going to go for the blitzkrieg approach, you need to finish them off in the first half hour or at least score two goals. Either that or conserve your energy. So what do you lot think? Let me know in the comments below. I want to know your thoughts on the players, potential lineups, opposition, how you think this game might go and why not give me a score prediction. And of course, if you have enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate you liking this video. Follow me on social media on Instagram and Twitter at Football Yannick, that is at Football Yannick. Other than that, guys, I think that's it. So I'm gonna bounce. You enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I let me back.